Now, we've talked about graphing quadratic guys who were already set up in the form for you to identify <coughs> the vertex, right? What if I gave you this guy, though? If I say that f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 8x plus 9, is this set up for you to identify the vertex? No, it's not. No, we have a couple of ways we have for getting this. I'm going to show you both ways. One of the things I want you to know is the vertex formula. So when you have just a normal quadratic guy that's not in that vertex form, your vertex form is given by this. Your vertex is equal to negative b over 2a. Basically what that means is this is your x-coordinate. You guys with me on that? And then where, are the b, where does the b and the a come from? What are those numbers? Coefficients. Coefficients for your standard quadratic equation. a is your lead coefficient. b is your middle term. Now does this b over 2a look familiar to you at all? Yeah. Where, where have you seen that before? Exactly right. If you remember the quadratic formula, how does that go? You can sing it if you want to. No, that's not right. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, b squared minus the square root of c over 2a over 2a. That's the quadratic formula, right? Now, this is what I want to do so you can see what's going on here. I can separate this and say negative b over 2a plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, and that guy's over 2a. We've had, we have said before that there is symmetry for these parabolas, right? And that symmetry is based off of that axis of symmetry, where x equals this guy right here, that x value for your vertex. <coughs> Notice that when you, let's look back at some of the examples we've already done. So that only determines x, the negative b over 2a? That's only the x coordinate. Okay. But we can easily find the y coordinate right. because we have functions. Now, this was your vertex right here, and you had your axis of symmetry, right? So this guy matched up with negative b over 2a. Notice how your, your x intercepts are equally spaced on either side of this, right? That's the plus or minus. From the right. Area. You've got the plus square root, blah, 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 and you've got the minus part over here. So that's how you get these x-intercepts with a plus or minus. Are you with me on that? So if I'm talking about the vertex, I'm saying forget about that stuff now. I just want to know what's that middle piece, what's halfway in between that, right? Where am I going to start? Now, if this is your x value, how do you go about finding your y-coordinate? Right, but if I replace my x with this and I plug that into the function, that gives you your y value. I mean, it's, to me, it's, it's so deceptively obvious, right? If I say, here's my x, what's the corresponding y? You're like, well, does it use c? What do I do? No. If you've got the x coordinate, how do you find the y? Plug in the x. You plug it in. I know everybody go, well, that sounds too easy. But that's the way it is. So if I look at the example that I have up here, what is A? Two. What is B? <coughs> so that means if I'm doing my vertex formula, the x part is negative B over 2A. So it means negative 8 over 2 times A, which is 2. What does all that give you? Negative. Negative. That gives me <coughs> negative 2. How do I find my y? I figure out what is f of negative 2. Hey, that kind of ran out of room here. So that means 2 times x squared, so that's negative 2 squared, plus 8 times negative 2 plus 9. So let's see, what do I get for that? I get what? I get one. 
You got one? Let's make sure. What's negative two squared times two? It's eight minus 16 plus nine, so that does equal a positive one. So if that's my x and that's my y, what can you tell me your vertex equals? Negative 2, 1. Your vertex is the order pair negative 2, 1. What is your axis of symmetry? Negative 2. Now be careful. If you just say negative 2, I will take off negative points. Two, it's two. the equation x equals negative 2. And the reason I'm stressing that you write that... But the thing about the axis and being sure that we say x equals negative 2 is later on we'll be talking about asymptotes and the equations for those guys. Some are x equals, some are y equals. And we must be able to distinguish between the two. So that's very clear. Just like anything you do in life, when you're trying to communicate with somebody, you try to be as clear as possible, right? If you just sit there, like my kids go into the pantry, Daddy, I want that. What? I want that. You're not even pointing. I get no d direction from you. Okay, here, here's a, here's a box of cereal. And they get mad because that's not what they wanted. Well, that's how you communicated with me. How do you find your x-intercepts here? So, right, so we solve this guy, 0 equals x squared plus 8x plus 9. Now, I think you already know what's going on here, though, if you pay attention. Where is your vertex located, above or below the x-axis? It's located above. Which way are you opening up or down? Down. The positive coefficient means you're opening up, right? So if you are above the x-axis and you're opening up, there are no x-intercepts, right? <coughs> So that means that there are no x center. Well, that's kind of. Can you? We've already talked about this. You can have no x intercepts, right? You just say none. X intercepts, there are none. What about your y intercept? What do you know about your y intercept? So f of 0, so I plug in 0. Now, this is, you know, this was when we were trying to solve for x. So here we know that x equals complex. But if you were to plug in 0 up here in your original function, plug in 0, what do you get? 9, Nine right? So my y-intercept is 9. Do you have enough information to graph this guy? Yeah? So let's make it happen. You told me that my vertex is negative 2, 1. <coughs> I really do not have room on here. There we go. My vertex is negative 2, 1, so there we go right there. Your axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. You said we open up? Right? right? What's your lead coefficient? So does that, it's a positive 2, so it tells me I open up. It's also a 2, which tells me it's either a stretch or a compression. What is it? Correct. It's going to be a vertical stretch. Now go ahead and put your y-intercept in place and see if it makes sense. You said your y-intercept is 0, 9. Do you think this is going to be a parabola that opens up? And it's going to be stretched? Does that match up so far? Think about how we get those other points. This is your 0, that's your 1, and that's your 2. What's 1 squared? But then you have to multiply it times 2, and you get what? What's 2 squared? 4 times 2 is? So you see, from here, you go up 8 units, and there you are at your y-intercept. Boom. Yes, and then you just reflect on the other side of your axis of symmetry. So I hope you guys see that it's very clear that we do not have any y-intercepts. Excuse me, x-intercepts. 
Let me ask you this question. Will you always have a y-intercept for a quadratic function? No. If you say no, that means you can give me an example of a quadratic function. Pull that further over to the left. And it would what is the, it would have a y-intercept. Right. What is the domain for a quadratic function? all real numbers, which means that includes zero, which is what we have to have for the y-intercept. So even though you may not see it, because you said if I pull this over yeah. here, eventually, off your window, it would, yeah. See, I like to ask those questions to get you guys to think about things that you want to say, you know, this blanket statement, you know, they either all do or they all don't. Or and there is, there's the graph. 